morning. And now we will begin our service, our afternoon worship. And let me call um, Brother RJ to lead us. Oh, in the end. Lead us in song leading. Wonderful grace box. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Let's all stand up. And for our first song, let's sing Wonderful Grace of Jesus. Amen. God's grace is ever bounding. Amen. Grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountains, sparkling like a fountain, no sea is greater than me. Other than this cup of mine is crash, and spirit for an endless human shame. Blinded by the crashes, no more Jesus, praise His name, praise His name. Bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you once again for this opportunity to uh, gather in your name, Lord, to praise you and to worship you, Lord. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to uh, work in our lives, Lord, and continue to uh, um, reveal to us uh, um, what we're lacking, Lord, and, uh, and continue to uh, strengthen us, Lord. And I uh, uh, thank you, Lord, for your Son, Jesus Christ, for Lord, for the, um, the blood that he shed on the cross, Lord, for... Um, if it wasn't for his uh, sacrifice, Lord, we wouldn't have the opportunity, Lord, to uh, come to you and to uh, praise you and to uh, glorify your name, Lord. And 
Um, I pray that uh, we'll continue to uh, edify one another, other, to uh, lift each other up, Lord, and to uh, encourage each other to continue what's, uh, to do what's right and pleasing in your sight, Lord. And I pray you'd be with the preacher as he preaches the message, Lord, and I, I pray you'd, uh, the Holy Spirit will give him unction, Lord, and that through the message, Lord, that uh, your name will be uh, lifted up, Lord, and and uh, thank you, one, uh, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you uh, forgive us, Lord, of our sins, Lord. Uh, we confess them before you, Lord, and uh, we, uh, um, we turn away from our sins, Lord, and I pray that um, you'll forgive us, Lord, of our sins, Lord, and I pray all this, and in Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. You may be seated. Okay. Once again, church activities for our announcements so september 11 just a reminder once again if you're not here this morning uh, grandparents sunday so if you have your grandparents here please invite them or people who's about to be grandparents man and then october 23rd will be our next event uh that's going to be our pastor and wife's appreciation sunday so uh so just so for the members so look out for your text messages we're planning out on what we're going to be doing for that all right and then october 30th will be our faith promise commitment sunday so that will be uh for our faith promise all right for mission november 13 veterans sunday so all the veterans will be celebrating them and uh, we'll be thanking each and every one. And uh, November 28th will be our Thanksgiving and First Fruit Sunday. So for your first fruits, uh, we'll be giving all our first fruits for la the last years. And then we'll be um, giving an, uh, making a new one. All right. What else? All right. Yeah, so, yeah, we're going to be... I have to, uh, so announcement for that, for next year's camp. Uh, next week, we'll be having a meeting about that. So we're going to be talking about what's going to, what are the good things and then the hiccups or discrepancies that we think we can change. So next week, be here. We'll be having a meeting right after church. Uh, I said it's going to be the morning service or, so it's going to be on the afternoon. Yeah, so basically, we'll have a meeting for that. We'll talk about uh, the good things and the bad things, and we'll plan out f for next year. So the earlier, the better. And then for our preaching schedule for the men, uh, Brother Harry will be, pre uh, will be doing the Sunday school on the 28th. So that's week. That's next week. Is it two weeks? Okay, I can do math. All right. It's in two weeks. All right, Brother Harry will be doing Sunday school, and then the preacher will be Brother TJ. Amen. Amen. Okay, so please be prepared. All right. Is there anything else? I don't think we have anything else. So hopefully we still have energy. I know it's hot and we're full, and that's not a good combination. Get sleepy. All right, so we're going to be... Let's go ahead and stand up once again and, and let me call on our song leader to lead us on another song. Yeah. All right, for our second song, let's sing Dwelling in the New Land. All right, first one, ready, sing.
You know, even if you don't want to sing, you hear that kind of playing, you would want to sing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Please be seated. Amen. All right. So, testimony time. So, we want to be our first. Campers. Yeah, campers. I guess I'm the first one because I'm already here. Amen. So, testimony. <clears throat> so, well, we already did our kind of like the bonfire thing. So, it's kind of like the same thing. But, um, thankful to God that we were able to do our camp this year and I was able to attend this year because last year I wasn't here so um, I'm thankful that uh, the messages were pretty good uh, the, you definitely um, learn a lot from it especially on the things we need to do as Christians and we are not uh, we for me, I feel like um, growing in church doesn't mean you are uh, you are you fully know everything about the word about the Bible, and being able to stand up in front of the people and try to teach them. That's I think that's that's where you learn more. Yeah. So, and. And we focus on one chapter, which is First Peter chapter five, and you notice that I noticed that on that one week, we we have different topics and subjects, just based on one chapter alone. So you can see how um, how alive the word is. So that's a blessing. All right, Who's, who wants to go next? Should I call someone? No. Amen, Brother RJ. Yeah, I just want to thank the Lord for the camp, for the messages. It was a blessing, even uh, for Pastor, uh, his presence over there. Um, well, both of our both of our pastors, but um, our uh, uh, invite uh, yeah. a guest speaker. Uh, it was a blessing for him to be there. Um, also, the traveling mercies that God had provided um, on our way home. Uh, it was windy as well, but I'm glad that I'm not towing a, an RV. <laughs> yeah, our trailer. Only on that time. And yeah, just uh, I just want to thank the Lord for His goodness and mercy. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Brother RJ. Uh, one more. All right. Amen, Brother Harry. All right, well, um, like I mentioned earlier, we, we, we have been gone for three Sundays and I think almost a month. And so I thank the Lord for uh, traveling mercies and I, I, I'm thankful also to see each and every one of you again. Um, I thank the Lord for, like what um, Brother Prince said, you know, when, when, you, um, when pastor assigns you uh, a scripture, it does not only speak to those who you're speaking to, but I felt like it was even speaking more so about me and my own, my own, um, my own spiritual growth. So my topic was on spiritual growth, and as I continue reading the scripture that was assigned to me, I kept thinking and applying um, the knowledge that was given to me through the Word um, in my life, and just being able to reflect. And so, um, does she want to come in? There, we have a visitor that I think she. Oh okay. Oh okay. Well, she's well. She can come in. Oh, always welcome. Um, but you know, truly, um, I'm thankful to the Lord for for His goodness and His grace. You know, that um, He just never truly forsake you. You know, um, He gives you uh, the right people and and the right place to be, um, because He knows your needs. And he knows, um, he knows what you need in order for you to grow. So I thank the Lord for his word. And I thank, um, I thank everyone for that fellowship. I, I, like I said last time, I felt like I've, I've learned so much from each and every one of you. I was encouraged um, by you and just hearing your stories as well, you know, and just 
even just having some laughters, you know, um, we're just sharpening each other um, through our fellowship. So I thank the Lord for, for that camp. And, and again, I thank the Lord for allowing us to be back home. Amen. All right. All right, amen. Anyone else? Is there anyone else who wants to come forward? Oh, yeah, she wasn't there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah, because um, my kids sleep on time, especially that bok choy, he sleeps every two to three hours. <laughs> so uh, I wasn't able to be on the bonfire, but um, I think um, Ryan told me that... Uh, you were asked if um, what you have learned and um, what you want to leave, right? That was the question. So um, uh, as I previously mentioned, there were so many topics and um, there's so much things to learn. If you're attentive, you really have a lot of things to bring home. Um, but I think one of the things that really um, got stuck in my head was um, being uh, humble enough to submit yourself, being submissive also means that you have to submit your will unto God. And um, that's, um, I, I always say this, that I'm that kind of person who wants to have everything organized and sometimes I want things to be done my own, may, my own way, especially at home. <laughs> my husband knows that because I'm like organized, do, do it like this, do it my own way. But um, being submissive means you have to um, submit to God's will and how he wants you to do it. And sometimes it's hard if, it's, if you're not... Um, humble enough to do that and i think that's one of what i have learned that um a, a lot of things or all things are not in my control and i have to submit to god and um if i let my pride go on the way then it's, it will be harder for me to do that um that's one thing that i've learned and um one thing that i um i should have left <laughs> in during the bonfire is that 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 um because if you you're not humble then you're um, proud, you have that pride, and um, that's um, what I I would have or I have left there is that being proud of like wanting things done my way, my time, and it's not good, and um, that's what I um, want to leave there, and hopefully um, I'm doing my best to like really not to think of uh, being so controlled of what I want in like the things around me but um it's only god's grace and and um, with god's help only you can do those things and hopefully um along the way even though i have been saved for so many years there are still a lot of things i have to um succumb to god's will and um we're learning as we um go on this journey in our christian life and there's so many things that i have le to learn and hopefully as i grow older i also have to be matured in that part of my spiritual life that's all thank you All right, amen. <laughs> amen. All right, anyone else? One more. Yeah. Hey, if, the, if the Holy Spirit is touching you, be, be sensitive, all right? <laughs> You hear, you feel something tapping you in the back? It's someone, it's the Lord pushing you. Don't, don't be scared, all right? Come, come forward. <laughs> yeah. Amen, that's true. Yeah. Oh, Pastor Francis. I, I didn't go to the camp, but I just would like to appreciate uh, Pastor Loriosa and the brethren here uh, in Washington. And of course, especially uh, Bless for inviting my son uh, to your camp. Thank you, church, for adopting uh, my son for the last five days. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, um, you know, my, my wife and I are grateful because, you know, um, him being in the military for, it has been, 
well, almost three years now, of course, um, the kind of church that they have in the, ba in the base or wherever he is now in South Korea, it's always a blessing every time we, you know, would hear that he would attend a fellowship or a church. But uh, one thing that, uh, as a father, that uh, has uh, blessed me to hear is that, you know, he's maintaining his relationship with our God. And uh, through prayer, even though he cannot find the right kind of church where he is, uh, uh, as a father, I, I'm grateful that, you know, he still has that interest, not just the interest, but as well as the, um, you know, for, for the spiritual uh, nourishment that uh, he, he, he ought to have. And uh, I'm just grateful that uh, uh, he's coming here. I know that um, um, as, 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 a, as a father who went through a rough life growing up as a young teenager, I don't want him to be influenced with uh, you know, as you know, being in South Korea uh, with all, uh, all of the influence from the outside influence, there's a lot of peer pressure, there's a lot of temptations out there. And he's, I'm just grateful that he is, the Lord is enabling him, uh, preserving that, um, you know, that, you know, himself from all the temptations and pressure and even all the vices that is available, you know, within reach for him. And I'm glad that, uh, you know, he's maintaining his walk and his faith in the Lord. Amen. And um, so seeing the uh, postings of Pastor Loriosa, I, I, uh, I saw him uh, behind the pulpit. And I was thinking, what is he? I'm, I wonder what, he, what he's doing here. Is he giving his testimony? Is he, uh, I heard that he preached. You know, and there's, uh, during our family camps back in the Bay Area, I've never heard him preached. It was only here. So that is a great blessing Amen. as a father, Amen. you know, to, to hear that. And, um, you know, um, yeah, just thank you, Pastor Loriosa, for, for, and the brethren for adopting my son for the last few days. And bless, thank you. God bless you. <laughs> oh, that is all up to him, Pastor. He's, he's in, he's, you know, he can decide on his own. So, yeah. All right, amen. So, does the son want to say something? <laughs> All right. Amen. All right, there you go. Hello. I know you all know me by uh, this point, but uh, I just wanted to say thank you for having me for uh, the past week I've been here. Um, just been great to know all of you, seeing Pastor Zhao again. Uh, Pastor Lariosa and the family and everyone else as well. Um, yeah, uh, I can definitely say like how <clears throat> how God has worked in my life being here. Uh, it's, and uh, you were talking about First Peter chapter five all throughout camp, and how um, I was I felt like really equipped uh, for going back to Korea. Um, just like the experiences I have there, as my dad would say, I kind of told him about how it's very hard to find like a good church um, like we do have here back home. Um, so right now I have like a, we have like a little group right now that we go to and just talk about God and everything um, and how to grow with each other because it's very hard to find those types of people um, out there, especially in Korea too, in the military, all these things going on. You have like clubs every corner of the streets and everything. Um, but yeah, like I can definitely say for sure uh, God has always had like his hand on me. Uh, confidently, <clears throat> knowing that he's always been there for me. And uh, yeah, just uh, being here with uh, people with like-minded faith and everything has definitely um, done so much for me personally. So yeah, thank you, Pastor, and everyone else here. So thank you. All right, amen. Thank you so much. All right, still have it. All right, so that's there you have it. So if you weren't able to attend our camp, please, hopefully next year, uh, come. It will be a blessing. All right, uh, it's also it's gonna be a blessing for us too to have you there. So keep inviting. So like I said, sorry. All right, we'll we'll, we'll do that.
All right. So, like I said, so next week we'll be having a meeting about that. So we can start planning. We're gonna start planning starting next week, and we can start. S and also, that's gonna be a good good time. So we can start saving up. Uh, it's not gonna be that much. Kind of like if it's gonna be like this. So we'll see. All right. So let's continue on. Let's go ahead and stand up once again. Let me call on our song leader. No more. And lead us on. Lead us for our cheerful giving. All right. Let's sing our cheerful giving. All right, let's pray for the offering. Uh, our Heavenly Father, we thank you again, Lord, for this opportunity to uh, give you what's yours, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, um, for allowing us to work, Lord, and giving us the physical health, Lord, Father God, enabled to, uh, for us to uh, make a living, Lord, Father. We thank you, Lord, for uh, your continually, uh, you continually bless us, Lord God, with everything that we have, Lord, Father God, and I pray, Lord, that you will accept uh, our, the givings, Lord Father God, our offerings and our tithes, Lord Father God, although uh, it's not um, as much as what you've given us, Lord Father God, I pray that you may continue, Lord God, to just bless what's been given, Lord Father. I pray, Lord Father God, that you will help us to continually be faithful in our giving, Lord Father God, for everything that we've given is yours, Lord, and what's uh, what we're given, Lord God, is just a token. Father God, and we just ask, Lord, that you may continually uh, continue to be faithful uh, to us Lord Father God and we just ask all these things in Jesus name we pray amen amen all right and you may be seated now we're gonna have a special song number by brother DJ amen
It seems my children and all want to stay around my table, but no one wants to work in my field. No, no one wants to work in my field. Who shall we? Stand up once again. Uh, let, let me call on Brother Harry and Noah for our Bible pledge. All right, ready? Begin. This is my Bible. It is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It tells me who I am, what I can become, and where I'm going. It renews my mind, changes my heart, and refreshes my soul. It is my daily bread by faith. I believe its promises, obeys commandments, and honors principles in my life. With the Bible as my guide, I will walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Thank you for that, uh, for the family, amen? Yeah, we want our kids to get involved as early as possible. Amen. amen. So who's the youngest? You uh, one, yeah. You one is already involved us in, in ushering. <laughs> All right. And so at this time, you know, it's again uh, uh, a blessing to... Uh, once again, uh, hear from our uh, visiting pastor from the Philippines. And he's from Bulacan. And you know, in Bulacan, they really speak deep Tagalog. You know, the way they speak their Tagalog is really the old Tagalog. Di ko You know, it's like... Uh, uh, and uh, when he prays in Tagalog, you, it's like poetic. Very poetic. So, well, a amen. So he will be uh, going back to the airport in California on uh, Tuesday. Airport, no, airport. <laughs> airport in California on Tuesday night. And then fly, then from there, fly out back to Houston to meet with uh, her daughter who is going his his daughter, and I'm an interpreter, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> to meet up with his daughter so that, because she's giving birth. Amen. 
All right. Yeah, we're not perfect. Amen. Praise the Lord is because of His grace. You know, who would think that a Filipino like me will pastor in America? That's beyond my wildest dreams. It's not even in my, you know, ambitions. But, you know, we cannot, when God calls you to do something, you just have to go and do it. Uh, you know, if God allowed me to, uh, went ahead and, and start the work in, in Australia, maybe my, my accent is going to be different, might. You know? <laughs> Yeah, how are you to die? How do you want to do to die? <laughs> All right. So, but anyway, praise the Lord. Uh, I'm here. God has a purpose. God has a reason. Amen? Amen. So He wants me to minister to the people who are here in in this area. All right. And so, by this time, without much ado, I'd like to call our uh, pastor friend. Yeah. Now he's uh, an additional pastor friend. Yeah. Amen. So, Pastor Ismael Zhao, for short, Pastor Smile. Amen. All right, Pastor Smile. It's always smiling. Yeah. Wow, let me get my Bible. <laughs> when I was looking around the stand faithful and true, I was taught by the message of Pastor Rolly regarding the trials into triumph. And I believe all of us have gone different various trials. Am I right? By the way, before uh, to share my message tonight, according to MJ, she should go home to take a nap because she has to work at 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Thank you for that, for letting me know because so you, I need to give a message, a short message and I, I will prepare a message only 10 minutes, 10 minutes before you leave. <laughs> I told her. Okay. So I think I could again ask your apology for allowing me to spend my last and final message. By the way, you know, when I arrived here June 16, this couple, the one who invited me, and I told them that I'm going to come to USA this coming June 16, 2022. So do not let me preach on online. But he insisted, maybe pastor, nobody will pick you up from if you are coming here from Baleo because we have something to do after this. So I said, why don't you take the opportunity while I'm here in America? So I'm glad they picked me up at Baleo and brought me to my first preaching here in America after four years because the last time we were here is 2018. So due to pandemic, we were not able to return to the U.S. because of some many incidents, right? And, of course, I'm grateful to this couple, and especially to Rexella. Every time she was requested by our senior pastor, Pastor Hernes, to compose a music, she always won, you know, because they have several categories for them to uh, introduce songs that related to our yearly team. Because IBBC men will always prepare a team every time they have a team. So they, he, she is always prepared. And when I heard, I thought Rexera, the one who composed that song, oh, Pastor Hernes, oh, really? That's why I realized from the Old Testament story to the end of the story. It <laughs> sounds like, you know, a walking Bible whenever she composed some music. And I'm glad she's here, and I almost, my spirit is uplifting, and then my foot and my hands is shaking, and I feel alive to sing along with her. Every time she plays uh, harmoniously, the piano, how she played, uh, how do you call that, energetic playing the piano. I'm glad she would always be here, <laughs> if, I, if someday will become a future mother-in-law. <laughs> because bless you already bless <laughs> to help you. Uh, anyway, I may become a prophet to her. When? <laughs> Amen. I'm not your Holy Spirit, but I am the prophet to her <laughs> and to your future son-in-law. <laughs> okay. Can I request Sister Excella while you're still here? I'm going to render. Do not look upon the tune 
of my voice. You know, I love music. I love to sing. And I told you last Sunday, but music hate me. But now, it is related to your team. We will be singing from Steve Grimm. Find us faithful. All right? For me to render a special number concerning find us faithful. I hope everyone that the Lord will find us faithful. Amen? Say to your person sitting beside you that the Lord will find you faithful. Can I hold the mic? Just like Steve Green. I am Steve Blue. He is green. I am blue. I love blue. <clears throat> Without practice, because he's very professional. Let me know where I'm going in or going out. <laughs> well, Pilgrims on the journey of the night. on the middle of the line. That's why I... Uh, oh, because they miss. And then the call... <laughs> Thank you. Wow, it's hard to sing 
with a professional accompaniment, you know? I am an amateur singer, never joined with the amateur singing contest, usually have in a piece in the Philippines. But anyway, this is my first time to sing in front of you, especially among the IBBC brethren, never been in IBBC main. I just sung when you left during the second Sunday evening. And maybe I have no choice, nobody will render a special number, just like what happened in camp. They were expecting a special number. Nobody attend, uh, nobody stand up or stood up, and I volunteered for my special number. <coughs> and thank God. Amen? Amen? Praise be to God. Anyway, your message is about the trials allowed by God to test us becoming into triumph. And, of course, your team, I don't know if this for the month or for the entire year of 2022, stay faithful and be true. And in connection with that, this is my last message. I don't know if they will invite me again. <laughs> Maybe after the rapture. I hope so. If they will send me a ticket, why not? <laughs> I'm glad to receive that. Uh, just volunteer yourself, send Pastor Smart to be back again. Uh, this is my plane ticket. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the urgency of evangelism is required for you to stay faithful and true. So I would like to serve with you this afternoon about the lifetime commitment of every born again Christian. Our agency is necessary, but before to deliver and to share with you the message this afternoon, allow me to ask you to open your Bible in Romans chapter 1. This is one of my favorite passage, my favorite message to share. Every time I left to other country or other provinces or other region, and I love to share this message that always speaking not to you, but speaking to me. Would you mind to please stand up as we give reverence to the word of God? Romans chapter 1, if you are particular with the personal great measurement of Apostle, Mo, Apostle Paul to himself. Romans chapter 1, verse 14 to 16. We will be reading this together because only three verses. If you are ready, say amen. amen. Okay, start with verse 14, read. I am therefore both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another privilege to share your message here at IBBC Washington. I'm so grateful for the family of Pastor Rolly and to himself also, and to his wife, how accommodating, the warm welcome, generosity, and being hospitable. Thank you, Lord, for the entire members of IBBC Washington. Thank you for the fellowship, the prayers, and uh, the, the enjoyment together with them during the camp. Thank you so much also for the presence of the family of Pastor Francis. Thank you, Lord, for your word that we're going to discuss this afternoon. We ask your empowerment through the Holy Spirit that will continue to elevate our spirit to extol your King chief to us. You uh, explain well your word, every one of us, through the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you. We commit everything to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may now please be seated. Actually, I would like to read the entire verses from verse 1 to 17, but due to lack of time, because I am thinking about MJ, I already saved in my memory that I have to finish my message before she will begin <laughs> to, to take a power nap. You call it power nap. Allow me to share with you a story happened here in Washington, maybe 20 years ago. Uh, can I ask a heavy thing to hold my Bible anyway? 
Okay, there was a man who came from maybe Golden Dales, Washington, came from a remote area, a mountainous area, and then he wanted to do some undecided plan in Washington, Tacoma, downtown. And so happened, he saw a group of people, and he overheard an old man. And who is this old man? Anyway, this old man, trying to become generous to his community. And out of this gratefulness, he made a wonderful offer and celebration to his own community. He is a rich man. Maybe he's very prominent in his area. And what he did, he uses a big amplifier by announcing to those who would like to accept my trials a game, a, a just like a fun game, but a very difficult game. Because in his mansion house, a big, wonderful, and beautiful house, there is a little like a swamp or a small river, not a Columbia River, a big wide, then we went to a huge river, only a small river like in Pasig River that grows very close to his house. And then he offered the game by asking anyone here can cross from this starting point then to the another beach by crossing this river. But they notice the river is something different, like a pumping bubbles, you know, coming from the river. It's like a volcano, a live volcano here in Washington. <coughs> and out of those river, they saw a, like a small piece flying out of the river. Because one of his obstacles, he put a piece known as a man eating piece, a small piece, but a man eating piece, known as what? Piranha. In order for you to cross, that is very difficult to swim. And then this young man came from Golden Dale. What is that? Out of curiosity, what's going on here? And out of curiosity, never realized something happening. And all of a sudden, all the people turning their attention to a splash of water coming from the river. And all of them look at the young man. And most of them, instead of being afraid, they all cheering him up and saying, go ahead, go swim past. And they all looking after the young man can able to test and can able to cross the river. And finally, he reached the end. And the, so the old man called the young man, hey young man, before you came, listen, he offered a different kind of consolation for those who were able to cross that river. And one he offered is a cash, a big cash, about $10,000 as a gift. If they will refuse, they will add another document for them. If they will refuse, they would offer a house and lot properties. Wow, that's a huge offer. But if still you refuse, there would be additional. Later on, you will hear. And then he called up the young man. Young man, come here. Before you came, I want to fulfill my promise, what I have told them. Here is the bag contain of full money I am going to give you because nobody attempt except you. And something unique to the response of the young man, sir, uh, I need to know. Hey, young man, I know you came from away from this place. Don't refuse my gift. I will be embarrassed. I may feel embarrassed and you put me in an awkward situation. Sir, I need to know. Okay, maybe you are new to your place. Maybe you don't have enough money. Here is the document. I sign it. I am going to give it to you with a lawyer certified it. No, I need to know something. Hey, young man, what do you need? Oh, maybe you're single, just like Gabe. Do you want to marry my beautiful daughter? In addition to the offer I gave to you previously, 
I am going to offer this. And then she, he called this beautiful daughter. What a beautiful, what a good offer. But he said, no, sir, I need to know. Hey, young man, what do you need? I need to know the one who put me down. <laughs> Have you heard that story? He was only pushed down on the river. <laughs> that what he need, someone who pushed him down there on the river. That's what he need. Are you awake? If you feel awake, then push him down, huh? And then if you feel sleepy, just fold your hand. The same thing I offer to you, so that I may not feel embarrassed, but I am happy to see you nodding your head. Amen, Pastor. Amen, Pastor. Okay. At least you look like praying for me. Amen to that. The specific, a specific topic that we are going to discuss is about reaching out passionately the urgency of evangelism and personal commitment, you know, the first love of Pastor Francis is about doing the task of evangelism. Am I right? He was assigned to that by our beloved senior pastor. How passionately we are when it comes to our own concern, it seems like everyone may ask ourselves, how passionately we are when it comes to our own concern, to others' souls. And I do believe evangelism is a lifetime commitment of every born-again Christian, especially for serving our community. Especially during these days, the war is still going on in Ukraine versus Russia. The never-ending pandemic not only affected the Philippines, but, the, but rather the entire world. And the Philippines almost preoccupied every year with different type of calamities. Aside from the Lahar, the flood, now there's an earthquake. And the prophecy is still alive even today. And this is why I urge all my brothers and sisters in the Lord, especially among the IBBC family, that evangelism is a lifetime commitment of every IBBC church members. And I feel very, very sorry for those recent earthquakes that we had, uh, about more than 300 uh, after check in Abra, a part of northern Luzon. In what way we can serve these people most? Although you may not be able to go to Bulacan in our place, in northern Luzon, in Visayas and MJ from Mindanao, and sometimes I'm asking her, you came from Mindanao, your husband came from Il Northern Luzon, if you're particular with the Philippines, how did you meet halfway in Visayas? Because you came from Luzon, you came from Mindanao, and, and then you get married here in Washington. Where is Visaya? What happened? And then, but along the way, the Lord has a plan to them. It is now time for every Christian must do the service of evangelism that every person without Christ should be evangelized. By the way, commitment with urgency is not an option. It is necessary principle for meeting goal. Doesn't mean we feel good about the way things are going. It means we are going to persist until we get the job done. When we talk about urgency, it must be clear, classified, and consistent. Does not necessarily mean a well-defined strategy or effective method of soul winning. We have Operation Go, we have Bridge Illustration, we have Roman Road. Doesn't matter as long as your heart is passionately reaching out those lost souls. Basically, we cannot find any person from the early church which committed to the task of evangelism except the man from uh, what I mentioned to you a while ago from Tarsus. As a matter of fact, he was appointed an apostle among the Gentiles, which is popularly known, formerly Saul, now called Apostle Paul. No question about him. Look to his statement in Romans chapter 10, 1 to 3. We may observe the various aspects of Apostle Paul's attitude toward his passion for the gospel preaching and evangelism. My heart desire and prayer to God for Israel. What? That they might be saved. We may not like Apostle Paul, but every one of us is called not only to preach, but to share at least 
must have the burden to show the gospel to all mankind because we are Christian and I personally believe that we are not only called to be saved but to serve. And so this is my greatest challenge. Challenge from Apostle Paul was also given not to me only but to you and to everyone. There are three good measurements of Paul's personal passion for evangelism. Let me go back again in Romans chapter 1. But before that, you still remember the seven I am of the Lord Jesus Christ? John chapter 6, verse 35, he said, I am the bread of life. John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. John chapter 10, verse 9, he said, I am the door of the sheepfold. John 10, 11, I am what? The good shepherd. Then in John 11, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. And then number six, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And finally, the last seven I am of Jesus Christ found in John 15, I am the true vine. Similarly, you says Apostle Paul by personalizing this good measurement of Apostle Paul when it comes to commitment toward evangelism. Did you see the three I am of Apostle Paul? In Romans chapter 1, verse 14, as we read along this verse together with one another, behold, he said, I am debtor. Verse 14, then verse 15, I am ready. Verse 16, I am not ashamed. But to improve this outline that I've been using this message, I have a three reminders how Apostle Paul the uses three I am. I am a debtor, it means Paul's burden. Yeah, thank you. I love you, Brother Francis. It's my fellow Kapampangan. Uh -huh. You know, one of the language, and you will hear from me later on, the word Kapampangan. Okay. In Kapampangan, thank you very much, Dakal Pong Salamat. I am a debtor. Paul's burden, he was wealthy with the gospel. And he said in verse 15, I am ready. This is Paul's belief. He was healthy with his attitude. And then third one, verse 16, I am not ashamed. Paul's boldness. He became wise in his approach. Every Christian must face the challenge of Paul's passion toward evangelism or soul winning or reaching out every person. Then let me go back again, the first one, Paul's burden, I am a debtor. This statement of Apostle Paul shown that he became wealthy with the gospel by saying, after his conversion, when he identified himself, what? I am a debtor. The only difference here in America, you will hear from me, what do you think, did he mean that he owed money from the group of people he mentioned? No, I think not about financial obligation, but let us look to his position. You know, in the Philippines, when you mention the word debtor, ako may pagkakautang, pardon me for using some native language back in the Philippines. I am a debtor. We use debt. We use card. In the Philippines, if you are a debtor, you cannot be trusted. But here in America, if you are a debtor because of credit card, you must, you are be trusted. You are more trusted. I don't know why a lot of twisted different in the Philippines. We use tissue back in the Philippines. You use your napkin. You mentioned bathroom. Are you taking a shower? But we use comfort room. That is the only difference in the Philippines and in America. And sometimes, why they always? We were advanced of about 12 hours ahead of you. But we were lay behind 20 years in economic situation. <laughs> that is why I realized the big difference. Let me go back again. Paul's burden. I am a debtor. Paul was in a divine steward of Lord good. What is that? His office made him a debtor. Paul had improved his talent, labored in his work, and done as much good as every man. And yet he still write himself as a debtor. It was because he had received a gift from a gracious God, the gift of apostleship. And no wonder, he uh, actually he was not qualified to become apostle because he persecuted the church. I am worse than any wicked sinners. 
but by the grace of God. God has chosen him. God has called him. God has put him into the place that we never wanted him. But thank God, the grace is unmerited. That we do not deserve. Like Apostle Paul. Paul has also divine service, not only divine steward of Lord good, according to verse 14, I am a debtor, both to whom? Both to the wise and to the unwise. He has also divine service of Lord vineyard. He was not only saved, but he knew that he was obligated to God and a debtor to the world, therefore, under obligation among the rich to the poor, educated and ignorant, because he was a Pharisee. He knew what was the law is all about. People far and near. This is why he became a missionary for three journeys. And he needed to emphasize the fact that he was a debtor to the entire world and to all different types of people. And I remember one of my principal sponsors during my wedding, Dr. Greg Tinson, a very popular evangelist in the Philippines, looked like Billy Graham. You will never understand John 3.16 without imparting to your heart the first John 3.16. Was it it? Hereby perceive with the love of God, we ought to lay down our life for the brethren. It means we need to reach out our own countrymen, our community, our friends, our loved ones, just like here. Recently, we have a big typhoon that affected the entire Visayas and Mindanao, including Palawan. Let us examine our burden, our commitment for the task of serving him without any reservation. But let me allow, uh, allow me to use the PCEC accounting or report regarding how many churches now? According to Philippine Council of Evangelical Church, burden to preach the gospel, be able to cover the whole entire 42,000 barangay in the Philippines. Here you don't have a barangay, only county. The specific objective that every person must hear the gospel twice because they believe people are dying without Christ, therefore we are in debt to their salvation. Amen? And I wonder why every Sunday afternoon, almost two Sunday, I never see this couple. But I realized why Pastor J.D., Julius Dukusin, always inviting people. Although we were only few. Last Sunday evening, we were only ten. Four out of ten, four of us are pastors. Yet, Pastor J.D. inviting people to come to the saving knowledge. I wonder why. Yet, he is consistent to invite people. Who knows? You may be pretend that you are attending regular Sunday service, including Sunday school, Sunday afternoon, but nonetheless, you still have empty vacuum in your heart. You don't have Christ in your heart. According to popular TV network, ABS-CBN, now don't, no more ABS-CBN, that every 30 seconds, people are dying in the Philippines. What about every minute, every day, every month, every year? It means life is short. But that is sure, however, the reason is sin is the cause. But Christ is the only cure. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what done for Christ, it will last. Very, very sure. I remind you, beloved, my friend, I will never call you servant. Jesus said, I called you friend. But here, I may not call you brother. Why? Until you bring back your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That you and I, both of us, have good relationship, standing before the Holy God, that we are now declared righteous, justified by faith. Amen? But I may not call you brother unless you repented from your sin and inviting by faith the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. Second, not only Paul's burden, Paul's belief, verse 15, not only I am a debtor, but I am what? Ready. Just like similar to Boy Scout slogan, when I send the summary sent by Yuli, the summary of five days to come, one of the commenters, oh, look like when I was in Boy Scout, you have a tent. Because during our Boy Scout days, we have a tent. And I, my position there is a grab master, not to grab anything, but they called me grab master to cook. And we won because I'm cooking mungo, what we eat. Yes, we eat mungo. Uh, how do you call that in, in English, mongo beans? No, mongo. That's the same? Mom huh? Mom beans, mongo? Mang? Almost close to mango beans. Uh, 
Uh, I'm glad there is a mango beans, but a mungo beans. And thank God for that dish, you know. And na ubos. They were able to eat all. Because of more. The second statement about his readiness, and he became healthy with his attitude. It means he was always ready to do whatever God him to do with his life. What about your life? What about my life? What about everybody's life? One of the significance of urgency is the being ready at all times. Let me share with you how he observed this. Paul became ready. Number one, he was convinced at the day of his conversion. In Acts chapter 9, verse 6, if you remember that, please open with me. Acts chapter 9, verse 6, the conversion of Apostle Paul on the way to Damascus. Verse 6, he said, and he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and I shall be told, and, and I shall be told, am I right? Deal with what thou must do. He surrendered himself to the Lord Jesus. At length he trembled with strong conviction, set home by the blessed spirit will make awaken him to tremble, later a sincere resignation of himself to the direction and government of the Lord Jesus because he believed he was convinced of the day of his conversion. And second, he was constrained to serve the Lord with no string attached. Verse 15, he said, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. This meant he was prepared by his background, by his education. In particular, he was ready for the purpose of God, for what he had been called, anytime, any place, anywhere. That is, why, that is why you may wonder about me that I love to talk. I love to talk with anybody, people, with anyone. I am not afraid if they will persecute me. Last time I was in New York 2001, I gave giving out a gospel truck. The policeman always following him. What are you doing? I'm giving out trucks. You are not allowed here. Never yet bomb the Twin Tower when I giving out trucks 2001. Um, my friend from Cedarville, Ohio, principal of a public school, he said, do not lead a prayer here. You are not allowed. What? And I said, you know what? I am not allowed to lead a prayer. Yes, you are only allowed to pray by, you, by some friend, but not in public. Oh, really? But you are a principal of the school. And then later on, I was giving out the truck. The policeman is following me wherever I go. In New York, they are not allowed anywhere. And I realize how sad to hear that. Although the name of your money, you put the big quotation, in God we trust. Now the American people no longer trust in God. Instead the pronunciation of G-O-D became G-O-L-D. Right? Not only he was constrained to serve the Lord with no string attached, but he was confident to preach the gospel. Very confident. Paul preaching his entire life and energy about preaching the gospel. What, by the way, what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? The heart of the gospel is redemption. And the essence of redemption, the substitutionary, there is no cross here, substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ, centered around on his death burial, resurrection, and he is ascended up into heaven, and soon he will be coming back very soon. Perhaps today, if you're still sleeping, you will be found out we're all gone. <laughs> and number one, he was ready to preach and teach any time. Second Timothy 4.2, preach in season and out of season, even though you love you seasoning. <laughs> preach anywhere. He emphasized his preaching on Christ's death, 1 Corinthians 2, 2. For I determined not to know anything but save Jesus Christ, whom he was crucified. His resurrection, whatever else they declare, we need to know the message of resurrection. Jesus rose from the dead because he's the savior of the world. He said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can go to the Father except through me. According to Dr. John Stott, without resurrection, there will be no basis of true Christianity. Paul was ready. How about you? 
Are you ready? Perhaps you may refuse to admit that you are not ready or you are not available. But here is the film of life. The film of life like watching a movie. When he was a baby, he was too young. When he became a boy, I am too carefree. When he became a man, he's too self-confident. When he got married, he was too happy. When he got old, he was too busy. When he got sick, he was too worried. When he became old, he was too old. But when he died, it was too late. That is why I'm reminding you, only one life will soon be passed. Only what done for Christ, it will last. Paul was ready to preach anywhere, anytime, any moment. Even at street corners. I preach in the street corners using my skateboard, using my gospel trick, using my puppet, using my every methodology in order for me to attract people, drawing crowd, the attention for them to hear the gospel, especially in the Philippines. Why the urgency of our lifetime commitment as a Christian? Next Sunday, our church, every, th every third Sunday, we motivate all our church members to go out. Before, we were only few. Now, the entire church members going out, the old man, the old lady, the young, and every church members, in order for them to motivate, why don't we do it here also? You know, Jesus Christ is coming back very, very soon. And I remember Apostle Paul's slogan, when he preached the gospel to, at Jerusalem, the religious center of the world, he was mobbed. When he preached the gospel at Athen, or Athens, the, the intellectual center of this world, he was mocked. When he preached the gospel at Rome, the legislative center of the world, he was martyred. Philippians 1, 20, 21, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And I remember one of the beautiful hymns, nothing in my hands I bring, simply to the cross I cling. No matter what may happen to me, I would like to bring my life to the Lord until he come. What I am is a gift from God, but what I become is my gift to God. Because you and I somehow or someday we will die. No matter what may happen, you have no choice. You will die. Amen? And last but not the least, not only Paul's burden, I am a debtor. Paul's belief, I am ready. And last but not the least, I would like to encourage you. And I listen later on. I'm going to share with you a beautiful illustration later on. Number three, Paul's boldness. I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. Would you be willing to say that in the person sitting beside you and tell him or tell her, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. This is the beautiful third statement of Apostle Paul. Now, MJ, be ready. <laughs> Which he became wise in his approach. The most character of evangelists was nothing to be ashamed of. Paul was never embarrassed by the gospel. Sometimes we may feel embarrassed to the point of speechlessness. According to W.E. Vine, a shame means the feeling of shame arising from something that has been done. But Apostle Paul never been ashamed of the gospel. He was always absolutely confident. In three bases, he was confident to the gospel. I never have the confidence to stand behind the pulpit, especially in America. I never learned to speak properly using English second language. Not like the eloquent preacher of Billy Graham, the intellectual mindset of Apostle Paul, or rather the good personality of our senior pastor. But nonetheless, I stood up because Jesus said, you and me, all of us, we should not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Especially three reasons. We must not ashamed based on its supremacy. I am not ashamed. It was the testimony of man well versed in the ways of the world and outstandingly successful in proclaiming the message of the cross. Paul knew the supremacy of the gospel. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 20, 21, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. In Acts 23, 11, he knew it to be far superior to any religion or philosophy ever known on earth, the Greek logic to the Roman law and to the Hebrew life. 
He never, never ashamed because it is supremacy. The gospel is powerful. Second, it is the power of God based on its sufficiency. Paul never ashamed because the gospel worked every time. The power that resulted from an internal force of God unto salvation. Never worry about the gospel. It is alone has to save the people from their sin and penalty because there is power in the gospel. The Greek word of power actually he uses this is constructive. But there are two meanings of the power. One is constructive and the other one is destructive. Came from the Greek word dunamis. Close to the word dynamite. If you produce energy, you need dunamis or dunamo. But if you put poor dynamite in these four corners of this building, it will destroy. A while ago, Brother TJ, we discussed how easily they build a building here in America, but how easily they destroyed one building in a split second. How powerful is the dynamite? That is the power of the gospel. Can destroy the work of Satan in our life, but can also build our life in the power of the gospel. Amen. The dunamis. It means a message sufficient to transform the life of many people like Apostle Paul, a former persecutor. He was there when Stephen was stoned to death. And he overheard the word of Stephen by saying, Lord, do not lay down upon their life what they have done to me. Maybe he remembered that. Therefore, never underestimate the power of God. Those early Christians was actively going out, and evangelism can never become effective if we don't go out. If my classmate will never serve to me the gospel track, I will never heard any more gospel because I was a formerly altar boy. You know in Tagalog, pardon me, I am very close Catholic in my belief. Sarado, Katoliko, dekandado pa, tinapong pa ang susi sa pinakamalalim na dagat. Subo pa ng pating yung susi. How can you obtain salvation? But it was the power of God. Amen? But thank God, we must go where the people are. There's a lot of people here. Hindus never go inside the Christian church. Muslims do not enter the Christian temple. As well as Hinduists and Buddhists do not attend Christian worship. However, Jim Peterson, author of Lifestyle Evangelism, the gospel is the power of God for salvation, present and future. It is basic to resolving human need, whether individual or collective. That is how, based on its sufficiency. And last but not the least, John, based on its simplicity to everyone that believe it. Amen. The gospel call is simply to trust in God's Son. Who is He? We need to put our step of faith, a very simple basic reason of believing the crucified Christ. When He said in John 6, 47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth in me has everlasting life. In John chapter 5, verse 24, Verily, verily, I say, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has eternal life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Now, my friend, a warden, a prisoner warden, was asked to surrender his life to the Lord by asking, How can I be saved? Apostle Paul said simply by saying, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. Not only the next call to lead people, Christ, or those who are Christian must go out, but the evidence from the scriptures, according to T.L. Osborne said, to be like Christ is to be a soul winner. Say amen. amen. And I asked several pastors or workers regarding their commitment to the task of evangelism. You know what did, do they say? These are the reaction. The pastor will say, number one, my gift is to shepherd the flock. Then I could never deal with non-Christians. So I asked, I asked them, who is the great shepherd in the Bible? He said, Jesus Christ. But he is a soul winner. And then the other one, the teacher will say, oh no, I do not make any public commitment to receive Jesus Christ. That is not my calling. But then I asked him, who is the greatest teacher in the Bible? The same answer, Jesus Christ. 
but he was faithful soul winner. The musician will also say, not I am addressing to you, Sister Rexella, and some of the musicians, I could sing a lot. I could perform well, graciously, but doesn't have the ability to share the gospel. But I ask, who is the greatest music lover in the Bible? Another, none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible wrote the longest chapter in the Bible. What is that? Book of Psalms, 150 chapter. And the center of that message is Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus loved music. He loved to sing. When he sing that song, what did he sing? Send everyone. Go, send I you. Here I am to send you. But he was a soul winner. Paul was a debtor, debtor to the word, always ready to preach. Was not the same of the gospel of Christ. And let me show you, I never dreamed to win the highest position, the highest person in the Philippines. Who is the most? Who is he? Do you know him? If you're a Filipino, easily can identify him. But if you are only a guest to this church, you may not know him well. Who is he? He's a former president. Only a few months ago, he ended up his service as a president only last June 30, 2022. He was our former president. He was accused by several Americans of having a war on drugs. The ICC doesn't like him. Not even the rebellious group of communist group in the Philippines. Even the Catholic leaders, the religious leaders, much more the politicians belong to yellow and pink. They don't like him. But you know what? I don't like him too. But I like him, how he ran the Philippines. Nobody could reject this person. You know what? The only person I believe, the only president, not only person, but the only president, be seated all military camp and police camp and the entire station camp in the Philippines. Because of the war on drugs, he need to establish his relationship to this military officer as well as the police officer. And one time, because his priority is to eliminate, you were not able to eradicate drugs, including the syndicate in the Philippines, but at least you can eliminate. At least someone is willing, courageous, and strong enough to fight and involve his slogan regarding war on drugs. I don't know here in America, if you know someone, he even blamed the previous president of America, Obama go to hell. He liked to say that, but he loved Donald Trump, and I like him, Donald Trump too. You know what? One day I have a ma church members, a very, very young officer, but dedicated officer, and he loved his family, very qu quiet guy, but he is also a black belter. And he loved to teach our young people of how to do self-defense. He wanted to contribute that. And one day, September 4, every first Sunday of the month, we had a lunch fellowship. His name is Brother Junior Hilario. Brother Junior, what happened to his hand? Oh, we have an operation. We tried to arrest one of the hitmen of the drug lord. The hitman was hired to kill all the drug pushers so that the drug pusher will not expose the drug lord. So one time, I asked him what happened to his son. Oh, we have operation, but he, our target escaped. Oh, really? Three days later, you know what? First Sunday, September 4, Brother Jun Hilario, when I asked one of my preachers while we were eating, eating lunch, oh, Brother Albert, we don't have water. And then he overheard, he came out, he bought a coconut juice. Uh, very close to our chapel, a and bring me a coconut juice together with 
my wife. Wow, that was the last time when we met Brother Junior. And then September 7, the Intel informed him they will have continued to operate the hitman because he was, uh, that hitman already killed four police officers and four drug pushers, so he was a wanted man. And so Brother Junior Hilario led the team about 11 a.m. And then around 12 o'clock in the mo evening, my daughter wake up us, Ma, Pa, Brother David is calling you because he's done something wrong. What happened to your dad? David told me, me tama si kuya. Anong tama, me Do you know the word tama means you are crazy, no? He was hit. Well, now he was confined at Tala General Hospital. For what reason? You know what? There was a small house and the target person is supposed to be to be targeted at 12 midnight, but they escaped and went to another house about 11 a.m. They followed him, according to Intel. By the time they opened, uh, the room of the hitman occupied the room in front of a Catholic chapel and a high school with a big light. So is it when Brother Junior Hilario, the head, he, he was a must, uh, like a staff sergeant, SP01, and along with him is about three P01 or private officers, patrolmen. When he started to kick, because the time he was the leader of the team, he kicked the door. By the time he kicked the door, the the hitman was ready to shoot him, and he was shot in his forehead and passed through them. So David called me up. Okay, we will take a shower first, then then about. 10 to 15 minutes, we rushed to the hospital, a nearby hospital, and we saw a lot of mobile uh, car, and even General MP, so the head of the Northern Police District, and we asked them, where is the media? No more media, only the police officers, about 12 midnight. And we prayed, and we saw his blood is spreading, you know, but they were already killed, the hitman. They already killed the hitman, but the problem he was with. And then, to make the long story short, around 6.15, he passed away. We tried to, all the medical tried to recover him, press upon him, putting some air, and, and although we were there to comfort his wife, his two sons, and we were praying together with my wife, and nothing happened. Maybe God allowed him, but I'm glad he's saved. I'm glad he's saved. He's now in heaven waiting for us. To make the long story short, there is a funeral service in this community. That's where President Digong came. The president of the, hey, I am the pastor of the Birib family and the person in, behind the, co uh, the, the coffin. And I overheard when he offered to his wife, said, uh, Mrs. Hilario, would you like to go to Dabao? I will arrange everything. Not now, sir, because there would be classes, maybe um, next summer, okay? So that was September 2017, we waited. I thought there would be no more promise to be fulfilled. We realized later, his wife, Hilda, told me, Pastor, we will be picked up by a band going to Billiamore Air Base, and then we will flew using a C-140, not C-130, but C-140 going to Dabao, and to meet this guy for a dinner. You know what? Surprisingly, we were in the hotel, and downstairs the hotel is a, a beautiful restaurant that only three families are allowed. Our families, we were belong to the interred 15 person. Second table is those who graduated from Philippine Military Academy, and the another table is the widowed mayor of Lamitan Basilan, Mayora, because her husband was killed in Basilan. No, they, they were invited. I overheard how she cursed, huh? how he cursed, you know, Palamura si Digo, and we over, but whenever he came to our table, he's very gentle. He can control his mouth. How he honors pastor, you know pastor, the media doesn't like me. They never announced that many policemen will died during operation. Really? 
and he was happy to talk to me and how gen and then I offered him Mr. President, at the end of our dinner tonight, would you mind if I'm going to share with you one verse? Sure, Pastor. At the end of the conversation, I prayed with him, and but one thing I asked him, would you mind if I'm going to read the Bible verse to you? Only John 3.16. I opened the Bible in memory, and I read to him, do you understand that? Yes, how God loved us. Would you mind if I'm going to pray with you a sinner's prayer? Sure. Will you please repeat after me? Yes, sure. And at the end of the prayer, we have a natural habit, a custom, that how we respect older people. At the end of our conversation. But before I prayed, you know, I have to put my so arm in his shoulder, and immediately his bodyguard, the presidential secretary, touched my hand. You are not allowed to touch the president. And then I look at the eyes of President, and President Digong look at this bodyguard. And so he allowed me to tap my hand. Ah, okay. We look like a friend, you know. <laughs> and then I offered him a prayer of accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. At the end of our prayers, he said, thank you, Pastor. And I took his hand, took his hand in order to, you know, bless like what we did in a young, he took my hand. Instead of I am blessing his hand, he took my hand and he blessed. He was the one na nagmano sa akin. Wow, amen. That is how powerful to share the gospel. Just like the gladiator sport during 70 AD, the Christian to be eaten by hungry lion the moment you expose yourself during 70 times, the Roman time, when you said that you're Christian, you will be put into prison and somehow they will make pun out of you and all the Christian will bring in the middle of the arena and all the people will watch together before they were entertained into gladiator game. And all the people watching how they killed Christian by allowing the hungry lion. You know what? One of the right hand men of the emperor could not contain his emotion and he shouted with his confident voice by saying, My dear Roman people, I am a Christian too. Put me there into the middle of this arena for the sake of the faith. And I am Christian too. My beloved, are you bold enough to say you are a Christian and willing to say? Shall we pray? The consistency of evangelism, Lord, the lifestyle of evangelism is now. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your message. Thank you for reminding us. Like Apostle Paul, you said, I am a debtor. I am ready. I am not the same. Oh, how I wish that every member of this church, Lord, will have the boldness to share the gospel. Nothing to be ashamed of. And maybe they will be able to reach out the entire community, not only here, but the entire Washington. Father, thank you for this family. While your head bows, eyes closed, I would like to challenge you. Do you have a boldness to stand up and to say, Lord, thank you for the message. Use this message about my life. I have nothing to be ashamed. I am ready, I'm willing for the sake of the gospel. Please, Lord, use me so that I may stay, remain faithful and true to the gospel. Would you like to stand up and came forward and saying, Lord, no matter what, I will remain faithful to you. Would you like to do that? You have boldness enough to come forward, and I'm happy for you if you will come forward. Please come forward and say it. Anyone, yes? Anyone here? Yes, amen. Thank you for those people who stand up. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for your message. Thank you for your reminders. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your faithfulness to us. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So while we're standing, before we leave, you know, we had been uh, blessed spiritually. Now it's our turn to be a blessing materially. Amen. And so one of the uh, uh, pastor, pastor Smile was telling me that uh, the reason why he came by himself because, uh, you know, uh, for uh, lack of funds for both him and his wife. And so the plan is for him to come here and then whatever, you know, uh, uh, blessing he receives, that would be used for the fair of the wife so that she can come and also see the, the grandbaby. Amen. And so last Sunday, we already gave... Uh, an amount for our uh, guest preacher and so uh, tonight let us uh, once again uh, practice our generosity amen don't just be generous by a lot of amens let us let our amens learn to dig in our wallets and put it into the offering amen so it is always a blessing to be a blessing to the man of God remember that you know, if you will be a blessing to the man of God, God will bless you too. All right. Okay. So, uh, this offering will be for our special love offering for Pastor Smile. Okay. So, if you're using a, a check, write it in the name of IBBC Washington. And we are going to deposit that in our mission account. And then... Every amount that will be given towards Pastor Smile, we will all give it to him and uh, probably add some more to it. Amen. All right. Amen. 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 All right. Okay. So, okay, I'll, I'll give you time. I know it's hard to dig, you know, especially if the pocket is deep. <laughs> all right. So, let's, uh, let us pray. And uh, after the prayer, you can just come up and just uh, uh, drop your entry in the ballot box. <laughs> now let's pray. Father, we thank you again for uh, another opportunity, Lord, to uh, be a blessing to one of your servants. By the God that you uh, always help us, Lord, to um, practice generosity and be grateful through giving you know dear lord that uh, we can never uh, pay back the spiritual uh, blessings that we receive because they're they have no there's no price for it but oh god help us lord to always uh, be reminded that uh, we won't be here without uh, the giving of others before us we are the result of giving and we are the result of giving to pastors and missionaries who went and declared and proclaimed the gospel to us. We won't be here, dear Lord, even without your generosity because you are the example. You gave your only begotten son, the ultimate sacrifice. And the Lord, your son, Jesus Christ, is the top of the list. Nobody can outgive you. But Lord, here we are. We just want to appreciate uh, the, the servant that you used tonight. And may we give, Lord, uh, with a grateful, joyful heart. And that we're giving not to please anyone but you. And we're not giving to impress anyone. We're giving because we just love to give. And so bless now the offering. And may you use it, dear God, for the needs of Pastor Zhao, his family, and his ministry in the Philippines. And we give you all the praise and the glory for all these things we ask and we pray in Christ's most precious name. Amen. amen. Let's sing, thank you, Lord. Ready? Amen. Come on. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord. For making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me 
Thy great salvation, so rich and free. All God's people say, Amen. All God's people say, Amen. Praise the Lord, we are dismissed.